what's up everyone welcome back to my youtube channel it's your girl sid i am back with another video my nails are coming off so it means it's almost time for a new set well it is time for a new set one because i keep saying that my birthday is next friday <laughs> my birthday is next friday so i am going to do my nails but i'm here at target today because i need to go grocery shopping but before we get into grocery shopping and all the things that i want to talk about today i just want to thank thank i just want to thank my new subscribers i have about four new subscribers welcome to my channel i hope you guys are enjoying being fed the word of the lord and hearing how i am being changed and transformed by what he is doing in and through my life so without further ado y'all we're about to go pick up a couple groceries before i pick up my son get some gas because i need some gas because if y'all see, I'm on E minus. Like, what is the deal with me not liking to go get gas? Like, I know I'm not the only one. And y'all, this is, like, annoying. So hopefully by next week, this will be gone. Um, but, yeah, let's get into this grocery store before I run out of time. So, come along. Okay, so, so far, I had to go back and try this one. I got some more of Tap the Browns pasta salad. Oh, my God, that I'm opening. Onion, banana, smoothie mix. Of course, I had to get my spinach. And I just to try this. Like, Indian style sweet potato curry blend. Like, I think that's going to be good. Probably going to be a little bit more seasoning. But that's okay. And y'all, what? Garlic parm? That's going to be good. That's going to be good. So, so far, and of course, my son stuff. He loves plain Greek yogurt. Well, this is the vanilla flavor. But he loves Greek yogurt. Let's keep going, y'all. The worst thing you can ever do is come into the store hungry. Because... Now I want everything. Literally everything. I'm so hungry. <laughs> yeah, I excuse this bad angle. I need to. I'm so upset because I am like 90% of the way done with my journal. And I need a new one. And I wanted some options, but I found this cute one. It says my voice, my voice, my power. Super cute journal. But don't know if they have any more or not. I legit said that is why you don't go in the store. I'm hungry. I spent $30 over my budget. Lord, child. I literally just got off work and I'm just, I was wanting all the food. That is the problem. <laughs> you got to do better. But I'm about to pack up these groceries into my car and head home really quick i got about like 30 minutes or so before i gotta go pick up josiah and and i'm still hungry so that means that i gotta run home make me some food and head right back out the door okay guys so i'm back i know this angle is kind of funky but bear with me i, I broke my phone holder for the car a few months ago and i have yet to replace it so anyway um, i was just in the kitchen right thanking god just for supplying my needs and putting the groceries away because the last for the last couple months i've been asking like my mom or my dad to like send me something because money was a little funny but today i was just in the kitchen thanking god it just be the small things that make you just be like thank you god like i was able to go to the grocery store and not have to stress or worry or be anxious i've talked about that too at um <clears throat> me going to the grocery store and literally feeling so anxious because i'm like lord i don't know this, if this is enough or not i did go over budget today but i realized why because i me and my son one needed um we needed new toothbrush i needed more deodorant in the journal i could have probably left that you know what i mean but um and i didn't add that into my calculation so i kind of calculated before i went anywho so i was just I've been reading Developing the Leader Within, and this is probably my fourth or fifth time trying to read this book, y'all. Like, literally, every year, probably the beginning of every year, I'm like, I'm going to read this book, or in the middle of the year when I, it's like the beginning of each year in the middle. So, like, January and June, I get, like, these new sparks, and I'm pretty sure everyone else does, because it's like, okay, beginning of the year, and then you, like, mid-year energy, you know what I mean? So, I've been trying to read that book for a very long time but now i'm like about halfway no not, not halfway i'm about four chapters in and in chapter four is just talking about how change is necessary and how 
we as people always resist change because it said change means personal loss. When you change certain things, when you change certain things in your life, it will cause you to lose things that either you were close to, whether it be items or whether it be people, because some people can't accept the newest version of you. Like that's what I've been dealing with these last couple of days, right? And it's just so crazy how <clears throat> I was reading that. And then I started to listen to part two of the Kingdom series that uh, Mike Todd is on. I barely got, I'm, I'm probably like 20 minutes in. It's a probably like an hour long sermon, um, which I try to listen to them before I go to work in the morning so i'm listening to this and he's kind of on that same topic of of change and what how we really need to change in order to grow in the kingdom and we're so we could be so resistant to change or we don't want to step on people's toes so we never change it says some people would rather die than change they'd rather stay in their miserable state they'd rather keep living in the way that they're living because it's familiar than to change or to accept people who have changed in their lives because they're like, well, you know, this old this old way, you know, you used to accept me and this and the third. Like, me changing is not me not accepting anyone else. It's me literally needing and <clears throat> needing to change. It was a need. And, they, and then they explain in the book, it explains how people change for three reasons. And the number one reason is because it was, you were forced into change. Something in your life forced you to change. Two, you recognize or someone has brought it to your attention that you need to change. And then that's when you change. But it was just so, <laughs> it was just so on time. And and Holy Spirit, help me stay on track because I know sometimes I go on a tangent. So to tie that kind of into what, Mike Todd was preaching um, and just how in the kingdom it is a requirement that we change we have to change our mindsets we have to loose ourselves from the old ideals and different things because it says I made this post a couple years ago I said ignorance is not bliss in the kingdom you cannot be ignorant in the kingdom of God because that is the, the enemy's playground is pure ignorance he plays off where you lack knowledge. He plays off where you don't have insight. The areas that you struggle the most or lack the most knowledge is the playground of the enemy. He knows, <laughs> Jonathan McReynolds said it. He said, the enemy will learn from your mistakes even if you won't. So say you keep going on these same patterns of life and you won't change because it's too much to, or it's too, it feel like, too much in your life will change if you make a change and so you won't do it so the enemy just keeps playing with that it's like your life is almost on repeat years and years go by and you still feel like okay not my situation my area code may have changed my phone number may have changed i may have changed my wardrobe <laughs> But nothing in you has changed. You are still the same person. Because I've always wondered, right? With certain, or or just in, in life with just different people in general. Like people in my close proximity. Like who are, um, who are up in age. Who have literally, I feel like the same conversation has been going on for years. Nothing in their minds has changed. And I always thought, you know, when I was younger, you know, when you get older... You're not going to talk the same as you used to when you talked maybe 20, 30 years ago. But if nothing in you change, what's going to if nothing in you ever changes, what, what, how, what, how can you expect anything in your life to look any different? This shit has a ton of potholes and it's, it's showing horribly. But how can you expect anything in life to go any different if, if all you do or you never change your mindset. That's why it says, be you transformed in the renewing of your mind. You have to take the time to do that. Like it's something that has to happen. It's not a beautiful thing because some people won't accept that new version of you. They won't like it. They're like, okay, why did you feel the need to change? Because sometimes changing yourself makes the people closest to you feel like they have to change so now because they feel obligated to change around you 
they don't want to deal with you anymore because they're like okay i used to do this this and that and you accepted me just fine but now you're forcing me to change but it's just like no i'm not i promise you i'm not <laughs> my my thing is not to force you to change <clears throat> i hope i um i pray that my life like spark something in you that you have a desire for yourself to change but I, I don't force change I can't change nobody nor will I force anyone to change and so he was just saying how for a lack of knowledge we perish for a lack of knowledge and we, <clears throat> and then we kind of we kind of blame life or we blame circumstances when it's really us who don't have that true desire to really change our lifestyle change whatever god is desiring us to change like we can't sit back and and expect it to happen on its own like man i wish i had my journal with me so i can dive a little bit deeper into that but what really got me i'll, I'll go there what truly got me on that topic of change and all of that the other day i made a video of um me venting i never posted it um but i was venting because um a lot of people cling to the old of you and it was a lot of people offended i'm not gonna say a lot of people it was a few people it was a few people um in my life who are offended by my change and and it really sparked something in me like why why is it so hard you know why is it so hard for you to accept that i changed but it was for my you know it benefited me to change but it didn't benefit you or you feel like it's not benefiting my change is no longer who i am is no longer benefiting you so you feel as if um you feel attacked it's almost like a personal attack it feels to um, some people in your life and I was wrecking my brain the other day trying to figure out why is this so tough but then when I'm I literally like chapter four literally came right on time because it just was dealing with change and why people resist change and why we're so comfortable with the way things are because change means walking in our uncharted territories I think that was one of the things he said. Change means walking in uncharted territories. We don't know how to navigate the waters when we're changing. We don't know what's next when, when we change. When we give things over to God and say, Lord, now instead of trying to control outcomes, I'm giving this to you. Now in instead of trying to um, produce, 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 I'm going to leave that in your hands. Like today I was sitting at work. And I was just thinking like, oh, what kind of content am I going to make today, Lord? You know, like what's going to get me the best outcome? And, you know, just trying to overthink and overplay the process. And and at first I was like, Lord, I'm not going to post because I don't ever want to be in that mindset. But he was like, do your part. Your part is to show up and invite the Holy Spirit in and allow him to move. Allow him to move through you, through you. Let allow yourself to be a vessel. Empty yourself and just be willing and available. The outcome is not even up to us. Whether two, four, zero, like whatever I post, it has nothing to do with me. Dang, I nothing to do with me. <laughs> they don't have nothing to do with me. I did my part. I showed up, you know. And I don't ever want to, um, or I'm never just going to show up just to show up too. But I'm going to have, I know that the Lord is backing me because this is something that he prompted me to do in the first place. Um, I don't know why I went on that, that tangent anyway, but, um, we, uh, we have a problem with change and I was in the category where change was forced a situation, i.e. breakup happened that led me to run back into the arms of the father everything that took place literally made me turn and run back to the father it was a forced change it was something that i didn't want to do i wasn't willing to do and it, and it needed to happen because god has been nudging me for years um yes i've always 
prayed to God. Yes, I've, I've read my Bible here and there. Yes, you know, it was a different way of how I follow Christ um, than, I told, than I do now. But it was a forced change because I lost what I thought I thought was everything. And then I had nothing. And I was like, okay, Lord, here I am with nothing. <laughs> yeah, I really want to cover this up. Here I am with nothing. Here I am, Lord, literally with nothing. I don't have anything, but here I am. I'm willing and able to serve you, right? But it takes, it takes for some of us. Some of us are willing from the jump. And then there's some like me who are rebels. And oh my gosh, it was so good because I was reading a story to my son yesterday about Benjamin Franklin and how Benjamin Franklin, of course, we are, he's well known for the um, his invention of electricity and figuring out how electricity works through lightning and different things like that. But as we were reading the story, he was a part of the founding fathers of the United States because while he was, you know, in his era, y'all, why I'm on a history lesson? Anyway, while he was in this era, he was the one who helped to get us separated from England. He was one of the ones, you know, back then to help write um, the Emancipation Proclamation. Is that what it's called? Emancipation Proclamation. I think so. But anyway, anyway, you know, the or the preamble. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I probably skipped some in the middle. But anyway, my point in saying that is that our founding fathers were rebellious. They no longer wanted to be attached to the kingdom of, of England. They no longer wanted that attachment they wanted their own opinion this is what mike todd was talking about and it was just so funny that i read that yesterday and i kind of had that same feeling or that same thought like we were built on rebellion this nation this country was built on rebellion and that has flowed through through generations and generations and generations we are such a rebellious people that it's hard to follow god when you're a rebel because you're like man god you said that but I don't know. We we have opinions. We have so many opinions. And unlike other countries who are so accustomed to following under one rule, one rule, one leader. And I'm not saying that's how things should be. I'm just I'm just thinking about I'm just trying to tie all of this together because my mom was kind of turning on this yesterday of just how we were brought up on rebellion, resistant of change, and so accustomed to how things go and how things were, that we fight so hard against against what God is trying to do, against the change that is trying to take place, against him trying to break down the systems that we built up. And I just pray this over anyone who is listening, that we will begin to break down the systems, break down the idea of rebelling, rebelling or just saying, I do what... You know, we always have this thing. I do it. Ooh, that was just not even. I do what I want to do. I say what I want to say. I say how I feel when I want to feel. You know what I mean? We don't have a respect for people's feelings because we do what our flesh tells us to do. We operate. If my flesh say do this, this is what I'm going to do. Like, we have to get out of that. That is an ignorant mindset. It's such an ignorant mindset. And because we're just letting our mouths run amok on people or are we just letting our lives just just <laughs> flow how they want to flow when that's not how God intended us to live. He he intended us to, to live among us. We are sheep. And if you remember that illustration, I have to find that, that clip of that sheep running into the same daggone wall and not going anywhere. That is literally what we do. Why ain't this changing? We literally run into the same wall, but this ain't changing, but I'm gonna keep going. I, this, nothing's changing, but I'm gonna keep going. You know, repetition, repetition. No repetition if it's not, if you're not doing any, I don't know how to explain that, but <laughs> defeats the whole purpose if you're being repetitive in the wrong vein. <clears throat> My prayer is that we won't resist change. We will allow it to happen. Either way, we can't control the outcome of life. We got line. This is what I'm going to say. Nothing we can do. We can do we can't do anything without God. I'm gonna say that. We can't do anything without God. Holy Spirit, help me to 
wrap this up the right way. We can't do anything without the Father. He gives, He's the one who gives us the authority to speak things into existence. He is the one who gives us authority to operate in this life. But all of the outcomes are up to him. And when we are in the vein, in his vein and following his instructions, the outcome is always going to be good. The intended end. For I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. There are plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Give you hope and a future. An expected end. God wants to give you an expected end. But in order to do that, we got to let go of our own ideas. We got to change the way that we think. We have to begin to put on the kingdom mindset. That is the only way that we're going to see the God intended life that we are trying to see. That's that's what I want to say to tie this all up before I get out of the car because my son about to get out of school literally in one minute. We got to change. There's no way we can continue in this life thinking anything different is going to take place if we continue to live the same life. It's not going to happen. <laughs> change, people. Ignorance is not bliss in the kingdom. It's not. But y'all, Thank y'all for coming along on this crazy journey. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye.